I guess my favorite guitar that Gibson makes would probably be an SG. It's got to be the standard, the LPS-6. I just love the feel of it. The neck has a, a, got a 60s neck on it, and just the playability is incredible. I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit more fond of the ESs. Growing up, you know, Saturday mornings or family reunions, we got to play some BB King. So I, I like an ES. They're, they're nice. I got some style to them. I wanted to be the kid going across the carpet, you know, playing the broom. My grandmother was like, don't be touching my brooms. <laughs> so my grandfather ended up buying me a, a Gibson, was a Sonics Deluxe 180. And, uh, you know, I just couldn't put it down. So it was really cool. After we stamp in the serial number in Made in USA, the necks then get matched up with the appropriate bodies and go to the neck fitters. The neck fitters then have to hand fit that neck into the body. Even though we have climate control in the facility and we have kilns to cure our wood and equilibrate it, the wood can still expand and contract, enough to interfere with the proper neck fit. So the CNC machines are highly accurate, but because of that potential movement, we intentionally make the tenon of the neck larger than the mortise of the body. So then the skilled neck fitters have to come with their chisels and fine fit that neck into that body. They also have pitch gauges and alignment gauges to ensure that neck is fit properly. The al alignment gauges make sure that the alignment of the neck is within center line of that body, and the pitch gauges make sure that they fall within the proper pitch off the top surface of the body so we have the proper action adjustment capability with the bridge. When you're here for 20 years, you get to have any guitar you want made that we make. I had a Supreme made. I went with a flame maple top and back quilted mahogany neck and a flamed mahogany body. No F-holes, that, that would run it. You don't put F-holes on a Supreme. But yeah, the neck in particular, I ran across 12 years ago. And I seen that neck and I wanted that for my 20 years. So, you know, at 10 years, I knew I was still gonna be here 10 years later. So I had to continuously move that neck from one spot to another so it wouldn't get lost for 10 years. So yeah, I, I'm, ve I'm very, very happy with that guitar. Turned out beautifully too, man. I, I love it. Gibson is very proud of their set neck heritage. We've dabbled in bolt-on necks in the past, but most of our guitars are set neck, so that neck has to be fit into that body. It takes time and takes a lot of skill, but once it's fit to that body, it's always there. It's not gonna move. So that's great in terms of the longevity of the guitar. You don't have to do any adjustments. You don't have any necks working loose. And then it also, and more importantly, affects the sound. Now you have a lot more sustain and resonance because that's all one, and that's Part of our signature tone. The proper neck angle or the neck pitch ensures that you have optimum playability. If it's too shallow, you might not get enough adjustment out of your bridge. It may you know, hit that body and be too low. If it's too high, you may have to raise that bridge up too much or raise your pickups up too much to where you're not gonna get the proper action either. It has to fall within a, the appropriate pitch window that we define for each model. The neck fitters use various chisels to ensure that they properly fit that neck into the body. They have various size chisels and they have to sharpen them routinely as they're working on them. And there's a, an appropriate gap that has to happen. And that's why it has to be done by skilled craftsmen. The neck fitters have to be conscious of the allowance of that tolerance for that tenon to fit into the mortise of the body for that basic fit. That's just the fit of the neck itself into that mortise of the body. But they also have to be conscious that they have proper alignment. They could take more off of one side or the other on that tenon, but now their alignment is off. So they have to make sure when they're fitting, they're taking it off evenly. So they're ensuring the proper center on that uh, from the neck to the body. And in addition to that, they have to have the proper pitch off of the body. For necks, we use an aliphatic wood glue. Again, it's tight bond style glue, industrial version. On all our wood gluing operation, the clamp time is 30 minutes. 
The guitars don't undergo full strength until they're all the way through the production process, and at that point, everything's cured. So that allows us to make a guitar very quickly and still have proper clamp time and all those processes involved. I got a Les Paul Supreme, and it's pretty sweet. You know, it's uh, actually got it from my 40-year guitar. It's changed a little bit. The first year they done it, in the big meeting they gave everybody who's been here 20 years, a very nice Les Paul Custom Plus, I think it was. At the 40 year, they let you pick it out, what you wanted, you know. And so that's what I picked out. The wood buyer brought in a bunch of wood, and I got to pick out my own wood, my necks, my fingerboard, and you know, and I ran it off the NCs in the mill room. And I, I got to route the pickups in it, you know, and just do a lot of the work to it myself. It's still means a lot to me, you know, you know it's the Cadillac, Roy's Royce of guitars. We do the final machining of the bridge, tailpiece, and pickups after the neck is glued into the body. The reason why we do it after the neck is joined is to ensure we have accuracy along that neck. We have locator fixtures that self-center and clamp the neck into the CNC at each station. We also have a gate that locates off of the nut. So now we ensure that our scale is accurate and that the neck is held under that CNC machine perfectly on center. We machine the bridge tailpiece and pickups at that stage. So now that's all accurate and truly on center. My very, very first guitar was a Gibson SG. I was very, very fortunate to start out with a great guitar. For me, it's just surreal to be here today. I look back and I, I would have never dreamed I would have done this for a living or be here, you know, the company that made my very first guitar. So that's, that's very cool and I'm very, very proud of that.